Hey, what's up, fellow Hoosiers? Great to be back here with you on another episode of Under the Hood with IU Football. I am Rhett Lewis, back here as we continue getting to know Coach Sig's coaching staff as we get set for spring ball coming up here in just a few weeks. And we continue our series uh, getting to know this coaching staff by welcoming offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach Mike Shanahan is with us. And, and Coach, man, can't can't thank you enough for giving us a few minutes of your time. Really excited to kind of help uh, our Hoosier Nation get to know you a little bit as you get to know Bloomington. So welcome. Thanks for having me, Rep. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, let's get this thing going here. I know you guys have been, you know, working like crazy here from the moment you step foot on campus to try to get this roster to a place where you, you know, felt like you guys could compete and win in 2024. How would you kind of describe that whirlwind process from setting foot on campus and then uh, getting this thing rolling? Yeah, I think a whirlwind is uh, is a great way to put it for sure. I mean, the, the minute we stepped foot here, it was immediately um, – you know, getting to know everybody in the administration. And and then after that, we we went to work on getting to know the guys that were in the building, um, you know, the, the current roster. And um, when we got here, as a lot of people know, that a lot of those players were in the portal or, you know, making those decisions, going through that process of, um, you know, making those decisions. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we reached out to them and met with as many guys as we could that were on the team and um, in, in the short amount of time and, um, you know, focus on if they were thinking about leaving, you know, trying to keep them and, and uh, watching film of them, watching film of the team, um, uh, trying to figure out where our office was, you know, just <laughs> going through that whole process was uh, every minute of the day was accounted for. And, uh, but it was really exciting. It was, um, you know, uh, just a, a pleasure to get to know each and every one, get to get a lay of the land of Bloomington, which has been awesome. So, uh, you know, it was definitely crazy, but a lot of fun at the same time. Yeah, it's good. you know, you get that uh, that kind of uh, that juice, right? That excitement, uh, right? You're kind of running on adrenaline, I imagine. A lot of long nights, a lot of early mornings and long days. But when when it's uh, when you love it, like I know you guys do, man, it's um, it's it, it, you know, you kind of you kind of live for those those moments where you get to put your fingerprints on a program like you can do now. Um, so you mentioned kind of getting to know the guys that were here, right? Or the guys that were considering staying here or leaving here. Um, what, what kind of stood out to you or, or what did you see that you liked, uh, that, that you felt like you could win with moving forward? Yeah, well, I, I think it, it first starts with just the kind of character that a lot of these guys had, um, you know, especially the ones I dealt with in particular, um, just speaking from, from my personal experience here, but, um, you know, th they were great young men. Um, you know, they just wanted, there's a lot of unknown. And I, I w was in a uni unique situation. I relayed this to all the guys that I spoke to was I was as a player, I went through three different head coaching changes. I, I can kind of empath yeah. empathize with all the different, um, you know, feelings and, you know, the unknown, what kind of offense we're going to run. How's the head coach going to be? How's my position coach going to be? Uh, just, you know, just, that new that whole process of going through something new and change and all that stuff. So I, I wanted to make sure that I, I had been in their shoes and and, and uh, that they knew that. And um, you know, so just trying to get to know them um, as as people first, and then um, you know, talking about maybe some things that we saw on film. You know, what we could do to help them moving forward as a player. Um, some things that you know to focus on and ways that we felt like we could uh, utilize their skill set on certain things too and, and give them that aspect as well. So just kind of building that uh, personal and professional, um, you know, relationship with these guys was, was a priority. Man, relationships, right? Such a big piece of, of roster building and now roster retention uh, mm -hmm. in this current age of college football. Um, you know, in, in your time, like going back to when you were a receiver at Pitt and now looking at, you know, some of the receivers in your room and the things that they're dealing with, like, how would you kind of describe that uh, evolution, if you will? Yeah, I would say it's completely different, right? There's um, a whole new aspect of just social media. Um, yeah. Uh, obviously there's other things going on in college football too, that weren't around when I was playing. Um, but it could be very beneficial for these guys. Right. And, and sure. the whole key for, for these guys is to stay humble and hungry. And, um, I think that's going to be the biggest thing moving forward. Um, you know, we've been able to, you know, build and add some, some pieces in our receiver room as well. And, uh, I think just from, 
from that standpoint, it's going to create a lot of healthy competition, hopefully bring out the best out of everybody every single day. And, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to working with each and every one of them on the field now. Yeah, and that wide receiver group did feel like it had, you know, maybe uh, some of the most uh, transition and turnover in terms of bringing new blood in and, and then trying to keep, you know, some of the guys that were here and big time contributors get to get to one of those here in just a moment. But um, the, the numbers in your room right now and, and some of the guys that, that you brought in that, it, you know, a bunch of reps in the slot that you get some real experience, the slot receivers coming in. What does that tell us about, you know, how you guys want to attack with this receiver group? Yeah, we want to be able to attack all areas of the field, do it, do it, um, you know, horizontally, vertically. Um, and, and that is something that whether it's our slot receiver, or outside receivers, we're going to cross train those guys to do as much as they can from all areas and in, in spots on the field. Um, and, and, you know, as we get to know each and every one of them, as we continue to work with them on the field and all that, um, I think that stuff will play itself out. Who's playing where, how we're going to yeah. move guys around. And, um, but I do think that one of the things that we always take pride in as coaches is, utilizing each guy's skill, skill set to the best of their ability. And, and I've always kind of viewed our receiver room as as a basketball team to some degree, right? You want to have your stars or your slots. You want to have your power forwards and centers and some guys that can do a little bit of both, right? Your, your, your shooting guards and, and three guards and all that stuff. So um, I feel like we did accomplish that, kind of bringing in guys with some different traits um, that will be able to help us in different ways. Uh, it's, I, I love I love hearing that because uh, you know in, in my main job uh, for NFL Network I work on a, a podcast that focuses on on roster construction roster building and draft evaluation with uh, my, my buddies Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks were both former NFL scouts and that's what they talk about all the time with wide receiver rooms building a basketball team guys that you can utilize in so many different ways and maximize their skill sets with matchups and uh, ways you know that that you can kind of be versatile with that group uh, which is super cool and, and that's what it feels like you do have and that's kind of what I was getting at there and you do have a couple of those power forwards one of them uh, a big get and a big retention from the transfer portal and Donovan McCulley um, what stood out to you, you know, when you were watching the tape and, and trying to make sure that we could get him back here to Bloomington? Yeah, well, I, I just saw a, a big, long, um, you know, guy who can stretch the field vertically. He can make tough catches. Um, you know, he, he has all the ability to run all the different routes um, and you know, and then you meet the kid. He's he's got a big time smile on his face all the time. He's got a great personality. Uh, you know, just gives off very positive energy. And um, you know, that was like, okay, you know, this this is another reason why we really want this guy to come back. Um, just just look, and then talking with everybody else in the building and every, you know, they all said the same thing. Just how great of a person and as, as a as a young man as he is. So uh, definitely really excited about him. Um, and, and then when you watch the tape too, you know, there's definitely areas of his game that as he continues to get more comfortable playing receiver, um, I'm sure most of the IU fans know, but, you know, he came here as a quarterback, made the transition. Um, and so he's really just tapping, you know, the, some of the things that hopefully he continues to work and continues to build on here in this next six to eight months and throughout the season. And, um, you know, so we're really excited about, you know, his growth and development as a player also, even though um, he did have a, a good season last year, you know, he, I know he's going to be hungry to continue to improve. Coach, obviously, you know, when you bring in a bunch of new players and then you have some, you know, holdovers here, um, you know, you've got a, you know what you want to do, right? As an offensive, you know, as an offensive coordinator, as a play caller, you know how you want to attack. You've got those principles that you have, right? But then when you're trying to merge all these players together, how would you kind of describe the balance between, you know, knowing this is how we want to attack, but let's also maybe kind of be a little bit flexible to work with the skill sets of some of the players we have at this point. Yeah. I think that second point will ultimately be the, um, the whole key and something that we'll lean towards more um, is, is making sure that we're playing to our strengths um, at all positions, right? Offensive line, quarterback, tight end, running back receiver. Um, you know, we ultimately want to do what our guys are going to do best. And, you know, that will start with the quarterback, um, you know, whoever that is, you know, we got to make sure that we're playing to that guy's strengths and then building the best system and offense around it to complement what he does best. But, um, you know, from, 
from that standpoint, you know, that's what spring balls for, right? We're, we're really looking forward to, first of all, going through the process of installing um, our core offense of what we're bringing from JMU. And we're going to make sure that we blend it um, as best we can. Uh, with what well, Coach Bostad's used to um, as the offensive line coach. And, um, you know, he'll have a big say in the run game as well. Uh, really fired up that we were able to keep him. And, um, you know, so it all starts with that, uh, the installation process, making sure these guys have the knowledge to uh, be able to go out on the field and, and, and showcase what they can do as players. And we will stress them. Um, while we're installing our core offense, um, we'll we'll be evaluating what these guys do well, and and then ultimately morph as as time goes. But um, you know, we we anticipate kind of going about it that way, and and uh, you know, and then us as coaches, we are, we're always trying to evolve too, and we do off season studies. Uh, now is the time of year to 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 look at other teams and you know add some things maybe that will help us uh, for the fall. So that's, that's the whole process of how we go about it. So I know you caught at least 144 balls from Tino uh, in your time together at Pitt. Uh, I didn't go back uh, to that, uh, to Tino's first year and those 10 passes he completed to see if you were on the receiving end of any of those, but I did count about 144 the next, the next couple of years. So you guys obviously have a great connection and with him coaching quarterbacks, um, and, and you coach and receivers, like, but as the offensive coordinator and, and play caller here, coach, um, how would you describe your interaction with the QBs? Oh, I try to, um, first of all, coach and Sari has been awesome to work with him. Uh, as, as you just mentioned there, we played in college at Pitt together, but I actually knew him since I was a sophomore junior in high school too. And we competed okay. against each other and then ended up going, um, to, you know, play together in college. And we've been, you know, uh, very tight and, you know, cl very close friends ever since. So, um, that has been really fun to, to, to be able to work with him and you know he does an awesome job of getting the quarterbacks prepared and not only just x's and o wise but just you know his experience playing the position in college and and then professionally um you know just the situations that come up in game how to handle crowds you know, there's so much more you know time management all of these different things that you know to the naked eyes sometimes don't um you know not things that you initially think of um and, and so I let him uh, obviously do his thing there and, um, you know, but we're constantly communicating back and forth about, you know, the best way to to do it for the quarterbacks reads, the receivers routes, tying it, all those things in schematically. Um, and then, you know, just like all, all of us coaches do, you know, I want to make sure that the quarterbacks are, are hearing my perspective on things. And um, I know Coach Nasseri is relaying a lot of that information to those guys throughout the week. But I, I definitely want to make sure that, um, you know, I am communicating with those guys as well as much as possible. Uh, and and just, just like any great quarterback and receiver relationship, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of communication um, and we try to I try to tell my receivers to go up and talk to those quarterbacks as much as possible, just about what they saw, why you did this, why what what he what he saw, maybe. And that constant collaboration uh, on the field with the players is no different than what we're doing um, in the office and in meeting rooms. So uh, you mentioned Coach Bostad uh, and the offensive line group. Again, you know, getting another big guy coming uh, out, back out of the portal and Carter Smith, uh, who played, you know, every game at left tackle for IU last year uh, to kind of continue to mold that group uh, into, a, into a big time uh, unit there along the offensive line. W what's your understanding of what, what do you have there and, and how, how you want to kind of approach those guys and understanding, you know, the impact that they're going to have ultimately on this, on this offense? Yeah, uh, you know, first of all, uh, coach Bostad's reputation as a coach, um, you know, it, it kind of precedes him, at least whenever we got here, you know, I knew of coach um, and uh, I just had a lot of respect for him from a distance, um, you know, as I've come up in the coaching ranks as well. Uh, so just excited that you know, be able to work with a guy of his uh, reputation and resume and all those things. So, um, but as far as the guys that we were able to retain uh, in Carter and then uh, Mike Kadick, you know, you watch the tape, these guys are are physical, they're tough. You can see that they play with good fundamentals and techniques. Um, I know Mike has been a leader here and I think Carter, yes. he continues to, to, you know, earn his stripes, which he did a lot last year at playing left tackle. Um, you know, he's going to continue to take on a leadership role as well. And then um, I know we're very high on some of the young players that are in the 
in that offensive line room. And I think um, you combine those guys with uh, the guys that we were able to add. Um, you know, I think we're, again, creating a, a position that's not only going to have a lot of competition in spring ball and fall camp and all those things, experience, right, compared uh, with some guys that have a lot of potential and are waiting on their opportunity to showcase what they can do. Um, you know, I think it's going to breed a, you know, a lot of competition and a lot of depth when it's all said and done. So definitely excited about that because that position ultimately makes the whole thing go. Um, one of the most important positions on offense for sure, but um, definitely on the team as well. So, um, you know, we, we can't um, be more excited about what we have in that room. And then, and then coach, you know, the, the guys that they are, the, the offensive line is, uh, has the edict to protect uh, each and every play. Of course, the quarterbacks, you bring in Curtis Rourke uh, in the portal, got a couple of guys here in Taven Jackson and Brock Lowry, and then a couple uh, freshmen that'll be coming in as well. Um, what's your messaging is, is kind of, the, you know, the leader of this offensive unit to, to that group that has a, a bona fide production type of guy, you know, in Curtis, and then a couple of guys, you know, in Taven and Brock that are looking to still kind of make their mark. Yeah, I, I think just like uh, just like these other positions, you know, it, it's about putting the work in. I know th these guys; they're all going to study. They're gonna they're gonna yeah. be prepared, um, but just making the most of every rep that they have between now and really all the way through the season. You know, uh, sure. whether it's with the ones, the twos, the threes, whatever it is, um, every rep is going to count. And um, you know, we we obviously have a couple guys that have some experience. Um, that will be in the room. And then we, like you mentioned, some younger guys coming in and uh, guys that were here that are, um, you know, going to be exposed to some new teachings, some new things schematically, maybe. And then some similar things where they'll be able to uh, process and, um, you know, be able to pick on, pick up on things quickly. So, um, you know, we're, we're definitely excited about that room as well. And then, uh, you know, with Coach and Sari and, um, you know, his, um, you know, coaching that he with his background with quarterbacks and, you know, putting it all together, just finding out what all these guys do best um, will be, will be fun. Definitely uh, looking forward to it. And, uh, and coach, uh, you know, lastly here, and we get you out of here on this and, you know, coaching is a, it's a labor of love, right? I mean, it's uh, it's hard work, but it's uh, it's rewarding work. How would you kind of give your, you know, why do you do this? Um, how did you get into it and, and, you know, what keeps you rolling in the coaching profession? Yeah. So I, um, I was always influenced by, uh, great coaches my whole life, really. Um, you know, I think back to my dad was probably my first coach. He always coached me in basketball every year. Um, but all my football coaches and little league all the way down to, um, uh, or up to high through high school and, and into college, you know, I still stay in touch with, pretty much all those coaches that I've been able to experience and, and be able to work with. And um, aside from my love from the game of football, um, you know, I like to, you know, want to be somebody that my players can say the same thing about ultimately, um, you know, just some, somebody that would have a positive influence, not only um, on them as players, but hopefully on the rest of life, be able to, you know, help them navigate whatever obstacles and, you know, through the good and the bad, um, you know, just want to be somebody that's going to be a resource for them from the time we start working together to, to the, to whenever it ends. So, um, you know, we're, you know, that's kind of why I do it. Um, but the competition is, is definitely a thing that, um, you know, definitely wakes me up every day. And when I, my feet hit the floor, I'm ready to go. Um, you know, always trying to find that edge because I just feel like football and coaching and all the, all aspects recruiting that goes into it, you know, it's, it's always something that you can be doing better or, you know, uh, finding different ways to, to gain an edge on, on the competition. So, um, and I've been blessed, um, you know, be, be able to work with guys that, you know, make coming to work uh, enjoyable as well. And that's a big part of it. So I got a great relationship with obviously Coach Signetti, but, um, you know, all the all the other coaches on the staff as well has been really fun to, you know, continue that with the guys that I've been been working with, but also be able to get to know some of the some of the new guys that join us as well. Man, it's super cool. And uh, football is a special game that way. And I uh, know you guys are ready to make this a special season and can't wait for it. And I uh, certainly look forward to seeing you guys out on the field. Coach Mike Shanahan with us today. Thanks so much for giving us a few minutes of your time. Appreciate it.